Hello, Lewis Black here. And before I start my rantcast, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be hitting the road. That's right. I'm going to be back out on tour and it all begins in Victoria, Canada. Check out the website, lewisblack.com. Please come out and join me. And if you, if you hear this, uh, this announcement, tell others, tell them to go to lewisblack.com if they're fans or even if they're not fans and they're looking for something to do, point it out to them. And you tell someone, and then they'll tell someone, and then they'll tell someone. And by the time it gets to the last person, they'll show up in another city that I won't even be performing at. And I hope that they enjoy whatever show they see at that theater. I'll be back in a moment with the Rantcast. Nobody likes waking up and feeling like crap. With GhostBed, you don't need to worry about that. At GhostBed, you'll find made in the USA mattresses with premium materials and backed by 20 to 25-year warranties. Plus, take 101 nights to break it in with their sleep trial. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories, or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com forward slash LEWIS for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. This could could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Hello, and welcome to the 151st episode of Lewis Black's Rantcast, entitled, From Biloxi, Mississippi to Rapid City, South Dakota. Yep, you're going to want to take a look at that uh, route on a map, because this is the kind of stuff that makes, when people go, boy, you're crazy to be touring. Uh, uh, this is probably one of the reasons why uh, it's because I am literally on the tour bus and one of the great joys of the tour bus truly is to be riding through the countryside and certainly not getting on a plane and flying however many flights it must take from Biloxi to Rapid City or to go home uh, back to New York at two flights out, two flights back get a day and a half at home and spend Really, literally, a chunk of each day of the other days getting uh, back and forth by planes to the to the gigs. So, nope, I would rather be as I am right now, uh, on my way to Omaha, passing a, a pretty lake. Uh, small, it's a nice small lake there, and uh, uh, the uh, I it's it's it, the countryside is gorgeous. Uh, it really has been over the this routing, and uh, we've been off. Uh, some of the main roads, and it's really been just uh, uh, a pleasure of a ride. And uh, even though it's cold as fuck here on uh, Halloween Eve, or it's Halloween, actually. And uh, I tried to do this yesterday. I tried to do it on Halloween Eve, and there were some problems with it. There may still be some problems now. It's hard to say because we're on the tour bus, and uh, I don't have the proper stuff that I have at home, the incredible camera work that I do, and I'm sitting there in the uh, the bunker that is my um, cable access studio. I have an unbelievable Yeti microphone. You know all of this. Uh, I've got a camera that uh, on this bus that it just, what you'd go, what is happening? His head's getting bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller. And hopefully you'll be able to hear me on this, uh, this microphone. Uh, and uh, we are, uh, and that's, but the reason I love the travel through the uh, on the on the bus is because it's it puts you in the middle of it it puts you in the middle of the country it puts you down on earth you don't fly over it uh, you you are in it and uh, it makes it a pleasure it really does so that it actually occurs in real time as opposed to well you wake up and oh I'm in blue blah and you pop out and you're in a city and you hop in a car and you concrete your way this this reminds me every single time of what a beautiful country this is and the land that we have and that we could take in immigrants if we wished. We could. We could really take in whole slews. We could even set up places where we kind of provide the housing and then say if, you, if it works out uh, and you create a, uh, a wonderful place to, for yourselves to live and you're happy and uh, you're uh, aiding the, uh, our economy, uh, you know, we'll help you out at the beginning and you'll be the closers on the deal. Um, we could do that because Lord knows I'm looking and we got the land and it's not all farmland, although we're passing through it now. 
it's really uh, it's it, it, it just seems to me there's got to be another way that, to deal with immigration. But that's not what I want to talk about now. And I'm, Lord knows I'm not the, the expert on on that subject, but it always stuns me. I, and I'll be in South Dakota and I'm, I've done jokes about the fact that you literally uh, you could put 200,000 Venezuelans in the midst of South Dakota. And nobody noticed that they were even there. It's like 800,000 people living there, something crazy. Uh, and with two senators, but we'll be talking about that with the good people of South Dakota when we get there, who I know aren't going to give up any senators at any time soon. Um, it's been a, a, a great weekend, uh, starting in um, Knoxville, Tennessee, and heading into Birmingham, uh, then down to Biloxi. In Birmingham, we ate at the Oliver Royale restaurant. They were kind enough to let us in after the show, and uh, we could actually eat like human beings. This is, it can't become a regular occurrence because I'll, I'll gain way too much weight, and it's probably already beginning to show. People going, oh, he, he looked so well back then, and what's happened now is he's blimped out, eating from town to village. They've, they've, all of a sudden, they've opened the restaurants, have opened the doors late to it, but no, it's, it's really kind when they do because these people have to get home and have lives, and the food was spectacular. Bison, and it was... Don't, I don't want to hear about it. So don't write in, well, you may be eight days. No, it was phenomenal. It was a, really a, a, a pleasure. And then on to um, Biloxi, where uh, Mary Mahoney's restaurant, which you've got to go to. I'm going to check something out. Let me get this right. Mary Mahoney's, I was calling it Molly Malone's last week. It's Mary Mahoney's Old French House, a, a great, great restaurant. And uh They've opened uh, our doors to us many times. Trey Mahoney, I have to thank you again. Um, you've always been kind. Your family has always been terrific, and your food is spectacular. As you can see, it's another reason I love to go around the country and tour the way that I do. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's just great to be able to eat at these places and, and not have to bounce up and get onto a plane and fly to somewhere else. I can't even imagine doing that. This certainly has made it easy and it's made it a pleasure and it is truly uh, a joy to eat at these restaurants. I mean, it is one of the, the people, you know, it's one of the great things of touring is to be able to eat at some of America's really finest restaurants and some some really, uh, you know, and the cuisine that, that, that they all have, the Vermonti Brothers psychotic sandwich and I, the list can go on. Uh, they put coleslaw in french fries on top of whatever meat you want it's it's madness it's it's splendid madness and then there's uh, uh all sorts of others there's uh, the uh the dinosaur barbecue i could go on with it. this is not what i planned to discuss i really didn't plan to discuss much i'm what i what i plan to do is avoid dealing uh with the news stories this week because we have been battered and bruised and it's just uh horrific what is occurring uh, throughout it. This, is, this last week was awful. Uh, hopefully next week I will return with some more of my extraordinary insight into the madness that this world is presenting us with. But, uh, uh, and I don't think that the news really helps us in terms of uh, the history and context might help in a lot of ways. And, uh, but there are all sorts of things that I think the news could do to make uh, uh, because they have just, uh, they are just, it's like being hit with a hammer. I do not want to continue that. I'm just trying to keep this very lighthearted. And it's hard to do that when uh, my two uh, defensive ends from the Washington commodes were traded today for, for nothing as far as I'm concerned. Chase Young, a first round draft pick, Montez Sweat, I believe another first round draft pick, both the incredible defensive uh, linemen uh, and and pass rushers both have five sacks this year and uh, that's uh, not phenomenal but they're young and gifted and uh, have an incredible future and I'll be able to watch it as they play another team one was traded for a third round draft pick the other for a second round draft pick I think that's ludicrous for the talent uh, that was traded to get a third round and a second round come on fuck you that's the best we can do, then don't trade them, okay? Pay them the money. I don't know why they didn't. 
okay? What difference does it make? I mean, it, you know, the, the new management, uh, should they pay for the sins of the old management? Well, maybe if they, maybe, who knows, maybe they should. Not, they, they really shouldn't have to, but it would have been a tremendous gesture to say, financially, we're going to extend ourselves a bit in order to really show you that we care. Instead, boom, they're gone. And really, the, the thing that, that makes, you know, life bearable at times, which is our, uh, our sports team, sadly, uh, and with my, my Washington commodes, even sadder, I guess. But the, the Orioles made up for that, I guess. But then, you know, God says, uh, you know, we open one door and we certainly shut the other door on, 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 your, on your hand, Lewis, or even on your head uh, and, uh, or on your foot. <laughs> uh, whatever that expression is, because I'm losing track of all of those expressions, and I don't really mind because uh, I don't need to be uh, one you'd be spouting one cliche after another. Uh, it's, it was a really uh, interesting uh, to to be traveling through uh, those states this weekend. I'm skipping from subject to subject, but it's going to be lighthearted because it needs to be. Uh, and it was warm. I mean, it was warm, as you know, this past weekend with, uh, I think, well, through a lot of the country. But, but I was down in Knoxville in this, the high 70s, the 80s, as we hit Birmingham, 85 uh, down in uh, Biloxi, uh, which is a town at some point you should visit. Uh, the home of um, Jefferson Davis was where they exiled him to. It's down there. And that was uh, an incredible place to visit. I didn't visit it this time. You, once in a lifetime, is one. I was there twice, uh, just to see if they were still just selling stuff way back 25 years ago. But still, even stupider that you kind of wanted to that house and had no no sense that slavery had anything to do with the Civil War. Um, but it's well worth your time visiting it if it's still there. And I don't know, uh, I guess, because of the Hurricane Katrina. But I'd imagine uh, those kind of places still exist and. Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> so it was warm, 85 in Biloxi, wake up, travel to Memphis, uh, another great city across the street from the, one of the, well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the greatest civil rights museum in, in, uh, in the United States, uh, just an incredible right, right across from the Lorraine Hotel, which you could, where uh, the, the Reverend Martin Luther King was shot and uh, certainly had a profound effect on on me in my youth and uh, and has had a, an insane effect his life and his death on on our country um, and you could see the sign of the lorraine hotel the original sign in the, from the window and it's just i've talked about it before but well worth going to memphis for that and then uh, you know head on out to graceland graceland <laughs> and uh the um it just as a kind of a yin and yang to, uh, to your experience. And, and, and so I woke up the next morning, uh, it being uh, Monday morning in, um, in Memphis, and it was what? It was 43 degrees. So I went from 85 to 43, cut in half. It was, it, that's a shock to your system. One hopes that it, when we move really through the seasons that we don't, kind of hold on to the summer that we kind of, I just feel it's, you know, it used to feel, am I, am I crazy that when, if, if you lived through the four seasons, that it was literally, uh, it would get a little cooler and then a cool, cool, cold, cold, colder. This was like, oh, I'm sweating like a pig. Ha, ah, fuck. I'm freezing my nuts off. And, and, it, and you wouldn't be freezing your nuts off if the temperature hadn't been cut in half. And that really wasn't. Um, it was not like uh, 10 degrees, but it was a total shock to the system. I was really stunned. And we headed from Memphis uh, the, the, the next morning, yesterday morning, and uh, and ended up in Kansas somewhere. And left there this morning, cold, 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 and uh, wandering to Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, I'll be on the Todd and Tyler show uh, today when you... Uh, when this uh, podcast, Rantcast, excuse me, they, they brainwash me. I have a Rantcast <laughs> when it breaks. So um, 
uh, it, um, you'll be hearing what I had to say on that. And next week, you'll be hearing some more things about what I have to say on Todd and Tyler. And uh, you'll be able to hear it because I think we'll be able to get it out there. I know that the, they'll help in terms of that. And they do get it out there. So uh, I look forward to your reactions. Uh, and now we're closing in on downtown um, Omaha. It's a, a, it's a, it's a great city. Great, great city, home of um, Warren the Buffet, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, Buffett uh, who's done a great deal for the city. Home of uh, the uh, Boys Town, always kind of amazed me. Father Flanagan, I, I think I got that right. Let's hope so. Father Flanagan's Boys Town, and it's uh, looking forward to uh, having maybe a little steak. Yeah, but I don't know. It could be fish. Uh, but hard to pass up steak when you're in Omaha. And it's been nothing but a food fest, I think, this this version of the Red Cast. Um, well, it's going to be tough on the kids this evening uh, with Halloween here. It's uh, freezing in most parts of the country, and that's not fair. These kids have gone through enough over the past five years. They, you, you know, God can't give them a little Halloween time, huh? They'll be out there, and then they'll... They'll come down. Some of my frostbite. No, I wanted another chocolate bar, mommy. It's not not right at all. Not even close to being right. And uh, and we've had really some good news this week. The economy apparently uh, you know went up by four four point nine percent rise in the economy. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's not seen as good news. Okay, you don't hear people celebrating it. They just think that everything sucks and it's going to get worse. So I don't know how we get over that. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Um, and it's uh, ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous that we can't even accept. We could go, OK, no, that's nice, but we need to fix some other problems. But at least kind of have some recognition of it. They're fighting today. I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to. We'll talk about that at some other time, what they're fighting over. We'll see what they do in Congress as they make is they continue to fight over things that don't need to be fought over and need to be solved, okay? Just need to be solved. And don't waste our time and energy making us crazy over it and how important it is. But you don't cut. You don't cut the budget of the uh, IRS. I don't give a shit. You just don't do it. I don't want to hear about it, okay? They're not creating an army of people who, uh, you know, to go in, uh, in, and get uh, conservatives. Uh, that's the reason they did it. Apparently, they said that uh, the uh, it was bipartisan in Congress, but uh, I, I don't, we'll see. I, I just think it's the way we collect money so we can do shit. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't matter. That's certainly not the worst news of the week, and I'm out of there, and uh, I'm sorry to even brought that up. And finally, that's really it. Uh, and, the, oh, yes. The uh, United Auto Workers have ended this. It seem to be ending their strike. And hopefully, uh, sometime soon, my union, the SAG after union, will end their strike. And uh, and a reminder that on November fifth, uh, nope, December fifth, uh, I just found out if all goes well, I'll be back on the Daily Show. And uh, it was a lot of fun to be on there last week, and I look forward to doing it again. No, I won't be sitting at the desk, but I'll be doing something, yelling and screaming about something that seems to bother me or us or whomever whomever comes up with the best idea of what to scream about i'll be screaming it um just one thing before i go this is it's not funny but it's funny uh, miami elementary school because they're so worried about all of the things that kids are reading and seeing and learning and how important it is to be sure everything is on track well the miami elementary school mistakenly screamed winnie the pooh Blood and honey for a class of fourth graders. Now, how nobody watched this beforehand is beyond me, me because the slasher movie features nudity, swearing, and scenes of violent murder. S students were offered counseling. Was nobody in the room? For all that they worry, nobody was in the you know, fucking room with those kids going, okay, we're going to turn this off now. They're, and now they got to counsel the kids over that. It's as opposed to like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then also in Alabama, I may have even mentioned this last week, but it should be mentioned again because it's so, so insane that uh, a public library in Alabama flagged a children's book for uh, 
uh, removal because the author's last name is Gay. Read me a story, Stella. It's about a brother and sister who read books together. Contains no sexual or LGBTQ content whatsoever. It was flagged because of her name. Somebody actually wrote in that, that they uh, that they flagged my my name. Uh, it's it, uh, it, it's unbelievable. We really don't have any common sense anymore. I mean, you know, really, you 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 really uh, have got to be out of out of control to going through the, the, the books that, that contain the word gay so that you can you can uh, make sure the kids don't know about it. They're there. They're everywhere. And uh, the generation that is certainly uh, following us has already been raised by gay parents all over the place. And there doesn't seem to be some sort of a outcry of suffering from them and to torture their parents, and, 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 and as a result, torture their kids is really, it's, I think it's criminal. To do it in the name of democracy, ludicrous. I probably used that word 30 times today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's it. That's really it. I still can't, I still wanted to stay light, but we kind of dipped into the, into the, the nut house there. Let me see if there was anything else there. The library director uh, conceded that Gay's book was pulled in error because her last name appeared on a list of sensitive keywords. So that should have been, I would edit it right now, I'd flip that back in as the setup. But always nice to have the setup come after the after what, what it is you were talking about. Uh, and that's really it from here. I do hope uh, you have a, uh, a, a, a hope you're, that your uh, Halloween was very good, that, you, that if you have children, that they enjoyed themselves and that, that you didn't wear a costume if you're an adult, okay? I really hope that you uh, really made sure that uh, it was a children's holiday, which is what it is, and, uh, um, and that you didn't eat as much candy corn, uh, it, and you didn't eat any of it, actually. I hope that none of it passed your lips, okay? I mean that. It's not corn that tastes like candy. It's just shitty. <laughs> you know, uh, have a splendid week. I hope uh, I'll be back next week. I hope I hope the news uh, really kind of finds a way to lighten up because uh, we are really taking, it's like uh, turning on an abuse channel. If you find yourself needing to get away from it, do it, you know, uh, because uh, you need to breathe. And you uh, need to do what needs to be done in your lives as I need to do what needs to be done in mine. Okay. Take care of each other. And uh, thank you for the privilege and pleasure of uh, being able to spend this time with you. Oh, yeah. And it's not Christmas. Okay. It is not Christmas. It is not Christmas. It is not Christmas. It's not even Thanksgiving. Look, there's a lot of stuff that I hate in this world. I mean, it's why you listen to this podcast, right? Maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but I know one thing that everybody hates, and that's bad sleep. Maybe you're lying in bed just trying to get to sleep in the first place, or maybe you're a hot sleeper, so you're waking up in the middle of the night dripping in sweat. That's why I'm glad to partner with GhostBed. They're a family-owned company, and they've been around for 20 years, so they know what they're doing. They don't just slap together mattresses like some of these other companies. No, they actually take the time to make a high-quality, made-in-the-USA mattress that's going to help you get the sleep you deserve, and it's going to last. If you're a hot sleeper, you'll want to check out the GhostBed Lux, which is dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Try out your mattress for 101 nights with their sleep trial. Shipping is free, and most orders ship within 24 hours of checking out. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com forward slash LEWIS for 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. Corey Novick has something to say about those in charge. I've had a few of like these where, well, you'll see, where those in charge 
are are going to try to reward those who actually do the fucking work. Corey was at the show in Reading, Pennsylvania, by the way. My rant could probably be relatable to those who work in a fucking toxic working environment. The other day, our director sends out a group text to us workers and mentions how he wants to treat us on National Custodian Day for our hard work. What do you think we were treated to? A hefty raise? Mm -hmm. More vacation days? Him quitting? Fuck no! He decides to be the typical asshole boss and treat us to pizza and ice cream. Like we, like people are nine and they just <laughs> had a had a really good softball game, or they lost and and you want to make them. Are you shitting me? You're trying to make them feel better after they lost the game. Pizza and ice cream. Oh my heart, be so touched. We work for an organization that makes over a billion each year, and this fucker keeps saying that there's nothing in the budget for a raise and all. Fuck you. We all know goddamn well that it is in the budget, but you're too cheap to pay us. Typical fucking corporate America. My coworker has a belief that he gets a bonus at the end of every year, and it is from what is left over in our department's budget. If this were to be true, you can bet your ass that we will be doing less is our way of saying fuck you and your bullshit, you knockoff Santa Claus looking bitch. God... Thank you, Corey. Thanks for thanking me, but really, thank you. You're the one who makes this show possible. This show, this rant cast, this, this is screaming from a bunker. Thank you for screaming. Thanks for getting it out there. And boy, is it ever true. Pizza and fucking ice cream. Yeah, and probably one soda. <laughs> Whichever one was the, a generic one. Wow. My coworker has a belief that he gets a bonus at the end of every year. And it's from what is left over in our department's budget. Oh, God. Well done. Well said. Well spoken. Those are, those are my compliments today, I think. Corey, thank you. This is from Allison Patton of San Diego. Um, and she came to the Escondido show. Hi, Lewis. I've been flying a lot and domestic flights are a goddamn nightmare. After getting the COVID bailout from our tax dollars, the airlines are now making $9 billion in profit. Instead of gratitude, those cheap motherfuckers are still squeezing us. I don't even know where to start. First, they bend you over with the price of a last-minute ticket. That, however, is just to get you in the mood. It's airline foreplay to show you how well you are going to be Fuck by the time you arrive at your destination. Next comes the extra fees. Want a seat with decent legroom? Oh, that's 40 bucks. Want to check a bag? That's another 35. But the real joy of flying doesn't actually begin until you get to the airport. The long walk to the gate, lugging all your bags. Because who the fuck wants to pay $35 for a checked bag? Then the boarding process. Gone are the days when it was easy to get on and off a plane. Airplane travel now reminds me of a public bus in a developing nation with way too many people crammed in and everyone jockeying for luggage space. With animals now allowed in carriers under the seats, well, there's really not much difference from that bus ride I took in Guatemala 30 years ago. Buckle up for your no-frills flight. No meals, no magazines, no pillows, no blankets. All that remains from the past is a single barf bag. A perfect metaphor for the airline industry today. A flight attendant recently confirmed the seats, aisles, and bathrooms are much smaller than ever before. Well, no fucking surprise there, huh? I'm not a particularly big person, and I can barely squeeze my middle-aged ass into the seat. And don't get me started on the bathrooms. The Max 737 is 24 inches wide. Have you noticed we don't hear jokes anymore about the Mile High Club? Is it any wonder? Inevitably, there are paper towels on the bathroom floor, overflowing from the trash bin. 
For the love of God, Lewis, there's 150 passengers and the bathrooms have an RV size trash bin. The stupidity is astonishing. To add insult to injury, the bathroom is coated in microscopic urine and feces bacteria, thanks to that vaporizing flush of the modern airline toilet. And why the fuck is the bathroom floor always wet? My brother-in-law, Dave, told me that's because well-endowed guys just like him uh, don't have enough clearance when they unleash it from their pants. Just no way to aim it right, even with my back against the door, he said. I'm not sure I believe this, but it does confirm that men with large egos and small penises run the airline industry. These greedy bastards make billions in profits and while playing, while paying their flight attendants shit and stuffing us into these tin cans. On behalf of every American consumer, I say to the airline CEO, just fucking stop it. Make us a plane that's comfortable. It's not that hard. Just pull your head out of your ass and take care of the people who saved your ass in the first place. Thank you, Allison. Well said, well put, well done. Deeply appreciated. Here's a bit of a, a rant and an analysis. Mm-hmm. Or an analysis that creates a rant. It's Tom Heffernan who has something to say. I've had such difficulty getting politicians to respond to this idea that I've resorted to writing to a comedian. I'm glad you did, Tom. The founders never meant for the rich to control this country. They believed in the one man, one vote principle. And I believe we need some form of public funding of elections to block the special interests and corporations from buying our politicians during the critical campaign phase of our democracy. Uh, I have to stop and tell you, Tom, I couldn't agree with you more. And I yell about it all the time. It's insane that the, the amount of energy and effort put into fundraising just in terms of the rest of us is mad. I mean, just in terms of individuals, I mean, it's madness. It's just madness. The richest 5% of our society make most of our political donations, while the bottom 95% contribute little or nothing. But you wouldn't know that from the texts I keep getting and that I know are going out to millions of people. That's because funding candidates is completely voluntary. If we made it compulsory for virtually all Americans, we would see a great change in our national priorities. The problem dates back to the invention of radio broadcasting. The Radio Act of 1929 established that the airwaves belonged to the people, but did little to provide for candidates messaging during election campaigns. Candidates had to buy airtime, and that created a financial arms race with candidates turning to the wealthy and corporations for funding. Today, over 95% of Americans have cell phones. We all use the airwaves and pay a monthly cell phone bill. Taxes and fees are included in our cell phone bills. And if we added a 50 cent election advertising fee to everyone's cell monthly cell phone bill, we could collect enough money to fund free airwave advertising for the two leading candidates selected from an open primary. Oh, really? An open, pro well done. To get this funding, candidates would have to refuse other funding. About 300 million cell phones Time 50 cents equals $150 million per month. Over the 24 months between elections, $3.6 billion could be collected for federal election campaign advertising. The cell phone industry generated $62 billion in revenue in 2022 alone. The only way to get big special interest money out of politics is to replace it with common interest money. Since the invention of mass communications via radio and television airwave advertising has become an expensive necessity that invites corruption in our politics, our cell phones and their monthly billing cycle could solve this problem. Sincerely, 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 sincerely Tom Heffernan. Boy, Tom, thank you. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think it's got to be done. I think, uh, and I don't, 
I think that they, uh, anybody who wants to run for office has to accept that and doesn't get any other money. That's it. That's the money you get to play with. All right. You want to do that? You want to, you want to sit and get on the phone every day and do it on your own? Great. Okay. You, you know, if you want extra stuff, you have to do it on your own. That's what I got to do. It comes, I'll be advertising, uh, stuff up, up over and over again, you know, and, uh, I have to do it on my own. Have somebody hold the camera and I say, Hey, I'm going to be coming to your town. No reason that they can't do that. None at all. This is bullshit. It is really bullshit. Well spoken, well said, and thanks for taking the time out of your day to share with us, Tom. It does mean a lot to me. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters, and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me, Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.